Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've been lucky enough to get a pre-release version of On One Photo Raw 2024. In today's video, I'd like to give you an overview of the new user interface, and I'd like to talk about a new feature called Brilliance AI. Now, there are actually a number of new features in this application, and I kicked around the idea of doing a single video where I gave an overview of each of the new features, but I think all of us would be better served if instead I did individual videos where I could go into more detail on each of these new features. I also want to mention at the top that I am working with a pre-release version of the application. When it is officially released, it may look and behave a bit differently. Also, I want to mention that there's going to be two different versions released. There's going to be a version they're calling on one, Photo Raw 2024, that is the standalone version of the app. There's also going to be a version they're calling, calling On One Photo Raw Max. That too will be a standalone version of the app, but that version will also include plugins for the Develop module, the Effects module, Portrait AI, SkySwap AI, No Noise AI, HDA, HDR, and Resize AI. And those plugins will be for Photoshop, Lightroom, Affinity Photo. Apple Photos, and some other apps as well. And along with On One Photo Raw Max, you'll also get 200 gigabytes of cloud storage, and you'll get three activations, so you could use it on three different computers. Now, as far as the user interface is concerned, is they've simplified it, and they've made it much more intuitive. We're looking at it right now. We're in the Browse module. And if you look over on the left-hand side, you can see there's a few icons over here on the top left, a few at the bottom. But if I compare that to On One Photo Raw 2023 browse module, you can see all these icons over here on the top left. Four more in the bottom left. A lot of icons along the bottom. Top right, we have a lot of icons in the top right. A lot of icons down here in the bottom left. Now, I wasn't a software programmer for On One, and I have no inside knowledge, but I imagined what happened was is they developed On One at one time. They had a user interface. They kept adding new features, and when, as they were adding new features over the years, they kept adding to the user interface with these icons till they got to On One Photo Raw 2023, and it's just so busy, and it's a bit daunting. And what has dissuaded me from doing like comprehensive how-to videos on On One, similar to the one I did on Lightroom Classic, is there's just so much here. On One Photo Raw is really a big application. It's kind of like Lightroom, Photoshop, and Luminar Neo all rolled up into one. And for a new user particularly, this could be um, a bit confusing. Well, with On One Photo Raw 2024, they simplified it a lot. In the top left-hand corner, you just have those three icons, lower left, three more. You have simplified the bottom area here quite a bit. On the right-hand side, there's no icons. So, it's a little more straightforward of what you need to do and where to get to go or where to go when you need to go there. Um, so on the left-hand side, for example, we have the browse module, right? And the edit module. Those are the two most common areas you'll be when you're in the application. But if you need to jump to somewhere else, you could click on these three dots and you could jump to the develop module, jump to local adjustments, sky swap AI, portrait AI, effects, and resize AI as well. Also, if you had more than one image selected in the middle, you'd be able to merge to layers, merge to HDR, merge to panorama, merge to focus stack, merge to time lapse. You also could export from this little flyout menu and print and share from this flyout menu. So all that's been consolidated right there. It's a lot easier, a lot more um, intuitive in my opinion. Also, uh, they have allowed you now to do bulk adjustments from the browse module. Uh, specifically, let's say, I click on this image, and I want to do adjustments to a number of different images. So I'd hold the command key down on my Mac. It's control on the PC. Select that one, select that one, select that one. So I have four images selected. I could go over here in that new feature. I'm going to go into more detail in a moment. Brilliance AI. I could roll this open and just click on. And it will automatically do Brilliance AI tone and color adjustments to each of these four images. And you could see the adjustments are kicking in one by one. Now, Brilliance AI is incredible. It uses AI to, first of all, do global adjustments to the image, and then it uses AI to find specific elements in the image and mask those and do local adjustments to those specific elements in the image. For example, 
If I click on this image and I want to jump over to the edit module, just watch how fast this is. They've really sped it up. Those of you that are familiar with previous versions know that when you would jump from browse to edit, sometimes would take several seconds. Now it just is immediately right there. Now, when we're in the edit module over on the right-hand side, we have a tab under the develop tab for Brilliance AI. And you can see how they simplified this. It's kind of more intuitive and more like the way your workflow would be. You'd do develop like global adjustments. You'd either use Brilliance AI or you'd use tone and color, right? Um, probably to start, then you do lens corrections, transform, then you do local adjustments. If it was a portrait, you do some portrait adjustments. If you were do swapping skies, you do that. And effects you usually do at the end. So they move that over there. Now, as far as Brilliance AI is concerned, as I mentioned, it uses AI to do global adjustments, but it also finds elements in the image and masks those elements. Let me show you something. Let me open up tone and color and you can see that really uh, nothing has been done in tone and color at all, right? So everything's kind of zeroed out. We'll open that up, see zero, nothing's really been done, right? So we'll go to Brilliance AI and let me just turn that on and give it a second. See how it adjusted the globally, it adjusted the image as needed. There's before and there's after. And now let's close down tone and color for a minute. Let me roll open Brilliance AI. So we have an amount slider. So it's very simple. If you, you did it, it eh, that's okay, but I want it a little bit more saturated and the tone adjusted a bit more, move this to the right. If it's too heavy, move it to left. This slider goes from zero to 200. By default, when you first apply Brilliance AI, it'll be at 100. I'll leave it there. You could fine tone, fine tune though, the tone or the color individually, basically tone it down. So if let's say the color is oversaturated, but the tone is good. You could open up fine tune and pull color down. So you could do that if you need to. But I mentioned that not only does it do these global adjustments that I showed you, it did in tone and color here, right? It also does local adjustments. So if I roll that open, you could see that it found flora, sky, and water. And if I go to these regions, you could see that there's little um, like radial selection boxes there. And if I hover over flora, you can see I found the trees on the left and some clump of trees way off in the background. If I hover over sky, you could see it found sky. And if I hover over water, I found water. Curiously, it didn't find anything else. Well, it actually found other elements in the scene. It just chose not to use or do local adjustments to them. For example, architecture. If I hover over that, you can see that the uh, grain elevator in the right-hand side and this uh, kind of pier have now an overlay on it. Um, so I could click that and then click apply and it will add it here. So I have the adjustment here. But moreover, if I hover over it, see this little arrow there? Also, if I go to regions and I hover, you can see just where it is, but you'll notice this little arrow when I hover over architecture or flora, I click on this little arrow and it will bring me to the local adjustments tab. You'll see the mask. I could edit the mask by clicking on it and I could add to, subtract from the mask. I could feather it differently. I could just adjust the mask. Anything you could do in masking, you'll be able to do. So you could readjust the mask if you need to. In this case, I want to add more structure and I want to add more exposure, make that brighter out there. So you could come in and adjust these individual things or these individual objects that Brilliance AI found and you could come in and readjust them. So I could go to, let's say, sky. And with sky, I maybe want to just make it a little bit darker and maybe make the whites a little brighter and the, like there. Maybe add a bit more structure up there in the sky. So you could use Brilliance AI to get you close to what you want, then you could jump down to tone and color and readjust globally what it adjusted, then jump over to the local adjustments and readjust the local adjustments it did, including modifying the masks. So I think that is pretty cool, and I think it works really well, even in this pre-release version that I'm using. And you can see that it works very quickly as well. Overall, I found the entire app to work very, very fast. Uh, kind of a complaint of previous versions is sometimes it would be pretty slow and would lag quite a bit. So 
Uh, in future videos, I'm going to talk about the keyword AI enhancements. Uh, you know, in the past, keyword AI would find objects, right? Um, now it will find not only objects, but it will find regions, and it will generate keywords for regions in an image. Uh, the layers pane has been uh, changed around quite a bit. Then I click up here, like on layers, you could see that the layers pane, plane, including you could have text layers. And with text layers, you'll be able to do anything you could do to a layer. You could do blending, you could apply effects to it and filters to it. Uh, so you'll be able to have a text layer, and I'll do a video on the text layers as well. And um, some people, every now and then, I'll get an email from someone uh, that is thinking of switching from Lightroom, Photoshop, and they're asking me specifically if On One Photo Raw could read DCP files. Um, a lot of times, you'll need to make sure that your color is exact. For example, you're doing a photo shoot for Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola red is a very specific red. And if you're photographing Coca-Cola cans, that red has to be exact. So what they'll do is they'll use some software and some equipment to calibrate um, their application so that that Coca-Cola red that they're photographed is the exact red they need. And that software and that equipment they use will create a DCP file. And you could take that DCP file like in Lightroom it will read it and you'll be able to then make sure that you're editing exactly the way you need to add it. Well, in the past, previous versions of On1 Photo Raw couldn't read DCP files. Now they will be able to with this version of On1. So if that's you, the few of you that have emailed me, you'll now finally be able to use DCP files with uh, On1 Photo Raw. And I'm not going to do a video on that, I don't think, but, um, but we're going to talk about other things. Another thing, one of my complaints uh, with on one photo raw's process engine was highlights i didn't like their highlight um recovery it just didn't seem to have enough throw in the slider and didn't seem to be narrow enough like it edited too much of the midtones um they've improved that a lot um it works great and i'm actually going to do a video where i talk about that specifically and compare it to the previous version of on one so look for that in the very near future so on one photo raw 2024. Remember, there's two different versions. If you want the version that not only works as a standalone, but also works as plugins and all those different apps that I mentioned before, uh, make sure that you purchase the Max version for that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.